Hi guys. Okay, I am going to answer a question by Sandy Straza. Sorry if I say that wrong. And uh, there was a video up on my channel for a couple days. It was from G-Man, and then he took it down. He right now is not in a place where he really wants to be out there. So he put it up because a friend of mine, uh, are, we're writing a book together, and I asked him to uh, give some feedback on my his interactions with me. And he's not much of a writer, he says, so he wanted to do it in video form. So he put it up there to get it to me and, and put it on my channel. But then he wanted it off because he just didn't want to keep it up there for a long period of time. Now, what happened was uh, I met G-Man a couple years ago and we knew each other he did an interview with me great fun I mean this guy is he is so good at interviews and he's such a good MC of staying just like neutral and he has fantastic uh, questions and he had done an interview or two with me I don't even know at this point how many um, and that's all we knew each other by was really a back and forth through those interviews and uh, never met him in person or anything but he had a really bad car accident. Uh, hit on drunk driver, uh, hit him head on, and he was in bad, bad shape. Now, I'm a ex-nurse, so after giving the information immediately, he was a part of what we call the family, our little clan here, of the originals. Of course, any of you can be a member, too. And if you ask questions very much and I interact with you, you become a member of the family. And But this was right early. Um, I got to know him very early in making videos. He was very supportive and instrumental in me keeping doing the videos, for sure, uh, because he was so supportive of me. Anyway, he was in this really bad accident. And his family lives in upstate New York. And he's, he has friends, but the friends worked. And he's a bachelor. And his, like I said, his family was in upstate New York. And I knew from what I heard, uh, like I said, the family, oh, I didn't tell you, the family immediately called me, although I kind of was watching him. That's a long story. But anyway, I expected something like this to happen. So I was kind of watching anyway. Uh, what was, I mean, by watching, I mean from long distance, watching timelines. Uh, watching what was going on in his life, kind of, uh, which I do with a lot of people that are uh, members of the clan or the family um, that we talk about. So didn't really surprise me much whenever I got this flurry of messages from the family that he had been in a bad car wreck. So kind of kept, we kept an eye on him, and he woke up, and immediately I was on the phone to him, talking to him, seeing how he was doing. And while I was talking to him, I homed in on what timeline he was on. Now, he had lots and lots of timelines where he had this car wreck. And I was just kind of keeping an eye on the um, car wreck and what timeline he was on. Now... When I was talking to him and seeing how he was doing, I was pretty sure that there wasn't anybody that could help him when he got out of the hospital. And as a nurse, I know that they were going to kick him out of the hospital way sooner than what he was going to be able to care for himself. Uh, so he was going to need some assistance. And I was fairly sure that if they did send in help, that he wasn't going to be okay with that because he's kind of a, um, you know, he's been a long time bachelor. You know, he doesn't want, he doesn't want other people messing with his life, and he certainly wasn't going to want some stranger coming in. So I offered uh, right off the bat to go and help him after he got out of the hospital. Um, so I was fairly sure that he was going to say yes. I was fairly sure he was going to say no at first, and then he was going to realize when they started getting ready to kick him out of the hospital that he was going to need assistance, and he was going to want it then. Now, while I was talking to him, 
I didn't think he had just woken up, right? And I thought I was in the clear in doing this because I try really hard not to do things that would blow my cover when it comes to the things that I know because people treat you different whenever you whenever you do these things. But ever so often I'll say something that nobody else could know and uh, I've gotten a lot better at not doing it the, the longer it's been since I've been dead uh, the better I am at not blowing my cover because people say that they want these things they want these miracles but most of the time they don't uh, it, it scares them and so I have learned that what people say they want and what they really can handle are two very, very different things. So I thought that he had just woken up and really I was in the clear with this. And I read the timeline that he was on at that time. And he was on a timeline where the person that had hit him was a mother. And she was a mother of two small children. And she died in the accident. And I could see in the timeline that uh, G-Man, they put this on TV, that she was in this really bad accident, that she had died. And um, she was well known enough that they put this situation on TV. And they put the funeral on TV. And um, the children were crying. It was a really bad scene. I mean, the whole thing was on TV, and it was heart-wrenching. It was horrible. And G-Man can come across sometimes as a pretty tough guy, but he's really a teddy bear. Um, he really is a teddy bear. And on this timeline, I saw him watching TV and um, seeing these children just fall apart. And... He knows enough about, he knows a lot about how things really work. And he's a long, long, long-term human. And these things just kind of come out that are very enlightened. Things just come out of his mouth. And he doesn't even realize he's doing it. But he's very aware that he creates his reality. And that's, a, he watched this TV thing. <laughs> and he knew that he created the, the wreck for himself for a reason. And that's where it stopped. He couldn't get past that to realize that, that mother had created what she wanted. Those children had created what they wanted. He just stopped with the he created what he wanted. And he just couldn't. It was heart-wrenching. He just tore him up inside on this timeline to see these children. And he felt guilty about it because he was the other part of it. And he lived and she died. And these children didn't have a mother. And he was just, it just tore him up. Well, I knew that. I was probably going to go take care of him, and I did not want him dealing with those kind of issues. I just, I just didn't. So I just very quickly moved him over to it. I just did a quick scan and found a timeline that was a lot better for everybody. It was a lot better for him. It was a lot better for the person, the other person involved, um, and it was a lot better for me and taking care of him. <laughs> And I switched him over to that other timeline. Now, what had happened was G-Man had been uh, awake and alert enough that when, I think it was when he was in the ER, he heard the cops talking to somebody medically that was taking care of him, probably the doctor. And the uh, medical professional had asked the, the policeman how, or the policeman had asked the uh, the person in the ER, how the other patient was doing, and the other patient, the other patient was not doing well, and that was, uh, and that's what he heard. And then later, he heard from his friend and his brother, who had spoken with uh, either police or the medical professionals that had told him that a woman had hit him and that she had died. Now, I did not pay enough attention. I should have scanned better, and then I would not have made this mistake. But I didn't, and did not realize that he had heard uh, in the ER, and he, his friend and his brother talked to him later, 
and said that they had been told that a woman hit him and that she had died. By the time he woke up really well, though, um, he, I had asked him, I think I had asked him before I made that change, um, who hit him, and he said, I don't know. And I think that's why I did the quick changes, because he said he didn't know. I thought I was in the clear. So I moved him over to a young man who had killed him, and the young man was fine. Nobody died. Um, as a matter of fact, I think the young man had been a good guy, like G-Man said, and he just had kind of a, kind of slipped, kind of fell down on the job type of thing. But the wreck kind of woke him up again, and he straightened right up, so it was a good thing for him in the long run. And um, so there was nothing for G-Man to be upset about. So he was, I know whenever I talked to him later, and he told me about that he had found out that it was when he was awake, alert, and really um, in the off after I'd made the switch, they told him that it was a young man that had hit him, and that the young man was fine, and he was totally confused. And after he'd been told that, he talked to his friend and his brother. They both told him no. They had been told that it was a woman that hit him, and she was dead. And he said, no, they're telling me it was a young man, and he's fine. And that's where the confusion was, is at first it was a uh, woman that had hit him. And then I kind of switched timelines on him for us and moved him over to a young man that hit him, and the young man was fine. And that's what that whole thing was about. So she wants to know if I can move her over to a timeline where she's a millionaire. No, no, I can't. And she wanted to know how this whole timeline thing worked. In G-Man's case, I could move him, number one, because I could talk to his higher self. And I got permission to do so. I didn't need uh, to talk to his uh, physical self because I was talking to his higher self. And the higher self said that was fine. Uh, so you never can do anything against anybody's will. And if his higher self said, no, it's up to his physical self to decide that, you're going to have to talk to them, uh, talk to him, then I wouldn't have been able to do it. But the higher self said it was fine, so I could I could assist in that little switch, which I was involved in. Okay, so switching timelines, you do that all day, every day. All day, every day. And many of you, what will happen is you will go into a meditative state, and you will... Uh, let's say that your goal is to get a better job and you'll go into a meditative state let's say you get up early in the morning and you stretch and you do meditation and you do meditation so that your day will lead you to getting a better job and you'll switch timelines and you will be on a timeline that will be getting you to a better job and then you will get up and you'll burn the toast and now you're off that vibration okay now you're off better job vibration you're on a different timeline now now you probably are still close to getting a better job timeline and it's enough that it will go ahead and veer you over to it but you are a little bit off now but then you get in the car and you drive somebody cuts in front of you now your vibration is a little bit further off getting you a better job because that better job you did in my in a meditative state it's a good job, a positive job, a happier job, one where you will vibrate higher every day. You will enjoy going to work. Okay? That is the, we'll go back to the radio uh, analysis. That higher job is set on 101. And when you, when you burn the toast, you change your vibration to 100.9. So you can still hear 101. It's a little starting to crackle a bit. Now you, somebody cut you off, and now you're on 100.5. Now you can pick up 101, and it's like every third word. So you could maybe piece it together, but probably not. And then you go into work, and you're one minute late because somebody cut you off, and they drove slow. So now your boss glares at you, doesn't say anything, just glares at you. And you go, oh, great, fine. Okay, now you're at 100. And you're not, you can't hear 101 at all. And your day continues like that, okay? 
Now you get off work, you go home, you take a bath, and you go, nothing happened in the day to get you closer to your 101 job. And the more the day was exactly the same as it always is with all of its pain and the asnesses of it, the more you went, what's the point? I meditate every day and I never get the, anything closer to the, my job. All of that stuff that I talk to every now moment is a timeline that you're on. And it changes. It changes a billion times a second. You change timelines. It's not that you don't know how to change timelines. You're doing it all day, every day, all day, every day, all day, every day. You're doing it. The difference is whether or not you consciously go to the timelines that you want. Now, that's easier said than done. I know that it's being done every day, and I mess it up every single day. Did it today. Royally did it today. And then I have to correct I have to correct and I have to like visualize what I want and not what I don't want because I got what I didn't want <laughs> because I was worried about it and remember the law of attraction doesn't know negative and positive it doesn't operate like that so when I said I don't want this thing to happen all it heard was the thing that happened or the thing that might happen and so it took me right right to the thing that happened because it doesn't hear don't or do doesn't hear don't or do all it recognizes is the event or the thing and since I thought of the thing it didn't hear don't do the thing all it saw was the thing so I got the thing <laughs> the event so now I've got to work myself out of it because the thing happened so now I have to smooth it out and I do it all the time because it's everything here is built to take everybody to 3D. It takes a conscious effort to remember every now moment, because every now moment, this illusionary time is being recreated in the now moment. So you have to recreate everything every now moment, every now moment, every now moment. And if you are feeling really, really bad, that vibrates you at a completely different timeline than if you're vibrating really good, which is because it's that complicated. That is the reason why I suggest, it is my suggestion, that you just attempt to, to catch yourself in the now moment, try to figure out how you're feeling, and try to be a little bit happier, and a little bit happier. And don't worry about how the whole thing works, because it is so complex that it is very difficult for you to figure out. So, and it's very hard for me to explain. It's hard for you to figure out. People have been trying to do that forever and ever. So why not just do the thing that will get you to the place that you want to be, which is ultimately feeling better than you feel now. And isn't that what you really want? You just want to feel better? You want to be happier? Isn't that what the truth is? Uh, you, you wouldn't want the big house if it meant that you were unhappy, right? You wouldn't want that guy over there if ultimately that guy would make you unhappy, right? Isn't what you really want to feel better, to be happy? Is that what you really want? So I say, you know what would make you happiest best. Trust that and head towards just being a little bit happier and a little bit happier and a little bit happier every moment of every day. Okay? Alrighty then. That's it for this one. Thank you so much for watch, watching. Hope you give me a thumbs up on this one. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell if you haven't done that. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for supporting me on PayPal and Patreon. Every dollar does make a difference. It really does. I appreciate it so, so much. Look forward to talking to anybody on their sessions. Coming up, Appreciate that so much, and it's fun to interact with you guys. Thank you for your questions below in the comments, really. It's fun that way, isn't it? Answering the questions, asking the questions, isn't that fun? All right, guys, huge hugs, and I'll see y'all later. Bye now.